Our fourth speaker is Kirsten Horsburgh. Kirsten is the strategy coordinator with the Scottish Drugs Forum, and she will give us today a European perspective on some of the groundbreaking work being carried out by law enforcement agencies in Scotland. Kirsten. I am, um, yeah, that's quite a, <laughs> quite a statement to start with, but uh, yeah. So Scotland has the unenviable position of, high, of having the highest rates of accidental and preventable overdose deaths in the whole of Europe. So in 2017, we lost 934 people, and in 2018, it's expected that there will be well over 1,000 people having lost their lives. So it's incredible rates. Scotland is absolutely in the midst of a public health crisis. And at times of crisis, we need to rely on other people who might not be our instant assumptions of those who would help in such crisis. The majority of overdose deaths involve opioids such as heroin and methadone, normally in combination with other drugs such as benzodiazepines and alcohol. And certainly over the last few years, etizolam has been one of the main benzodiazepines involved in our drug deaths. But the majority of cases involve opioids. Naloxone is a medication that reverses the effects of an opioid-related overdose. And we have had a national naloxone program in Scotland since 2011. It was introduced by the Scottish Government and it was fully funded for five years. Um, and then it has just continued to be funded by the health service and by local authority areas since then. Since the start of the program, we've provided over 50,000 naloxone kits to people who use drugs, staff working in drug services and others who are likely to witness an overdose. The priority of the national programme is absolutely to make sure that naloxone is in the hands of those who are most likely to witness an overdose, which is people who use drugs. And it can be an absolute lifesaver if it is in the right place at the right time. However, we do also accept that other people are quite often in the presence of those who might overdose. There are other first responders. One group of first responders is prison officers. So in the Scottish Prison Service, Overnight in the prisons, there is no nursing cover. So if there's a medical emergency, the prison officers are required to phone an ambulance and obviously that can take some time. So in partnership with the Scottish Prison Service headquarters, the Scottish Drugs Forum worked with the staff to provide training to around 300 night staff prison officers over the course of a few months. It's quite challenging training. Um, but the ultimate outcome of that was that now in prison service across Scotland, naloxone is available overnight to be used in an emergency by prison officers. The chances of an overdose occurring overnight in the prison service is fairly low. It's not something that they experience frequently. However, it is the principle of having naloxone available, which is a safe and effective medication that can be used by anyone for the purpose of saving a life. The other group who are more likely to be first responders are police officers and we find that police officers in Scotland are quite often first on the scene at an overdose. They have been partners in the naloxone programme in the eight years since it has been running um, and we have worked with them throughout those eight years to try and enhance their role so that they are then in a position to actually administer naloxone in an emergency and to carry it. I had hoped that by the time that this uh, conference came around that we would be in the position where frontline police were piloting the carriage of naloxone among officers. However, uh, just when you think you're getting to the next level, the final level, another level appears. So we are still working with them to achieve that. At the minute though, the Safer Communities Department within Police Scotland has a rolling programme to train new recruits. Um, so we deliver training to probationers, and the, the outcome of that eventually will be that naloxone training will be part of the annual officer safety training program. So it's definitely something that we're nearer to than we ever have been before. It's likely that when we do pilot police carrying naloxone, it will be an intranasal version rather than an injectable one. Um, but ultimately, um, we do not envisage or desire a situation where police are leading in the efforts to prevent drug deaths, but we have to um, acknowledge that they are very often first on the scene and could potentially be saving lives with naloxone. So just to finish, um, 
to be honest, we don't care who you are. You could be a police officer, a prison officer, a person who uses drugs, a family member, friend, a member of the general public. If you are somebody who is likely to witness an overdose, you should absolutely be carrying naloxone just in case.